You've probably heard a solar company say, we can't add that much solar because you need a panel upgrade. It sounds like one of those mysterious industry excuses, right? But this one's actually real and it's rooted in safety. The 120% rule comes straight from the National Electrical Code, section 705.12B23B, and it reads, the sum of the amper ratings of overcurrent devices supplying power to a bus bar or conductor shall not exceed 120% of the rating of that bus bar or conductor. In simple terms, it means your main breaker plus your solar backfeed breaker can't exceed 120% of your electrical panel's rated capacity. So let's talk about why that matters. Your electrical panel, that gray box in your garage or on the side of your house, is kind of like the heart of your home's power system. The bus bar inside it is the main artery, distributing energy to every circuit in your house. When you add solar, you're not just feeding power from the grid, you're now also feeding power back into the same bus bar. So instead of energy flowing in one direction, it's moving both ways. That's where overheating becomes a risk. If you overfeed that bus bar, it can run hotter than it was designed for. And over time, that heat breaks down insulation, weakens connections, and in the worst case scenarios, it can lead to an electrical fire. The 120% rule is basically the code saying, hey, we'll give you a little wiggle room, but not enough to fry the system. Now let's apply this to a real world scenario. Say your home has a 100 amp panel with a 100 amp bus bar. You take that bus bar rating and multiply it by 1.2. That's 120 amps total allowed between your main breaker and a solar breaker. Subtract your 100 amp main breaker and you're left with 20 amps for solar. So without any additional equipment, you can safely connect about a 4.8 kilowatt or so solar system. Not much by today's standards, but it's still something. That's why this rule often triggers the conversation about panel upgrades or workarounds. Now, some companies avoid upgrades using meter callers. Those are the devices that slide in right behind your electrical meter, giving installers a way to tie in solar or battery systems without touching the panel itself. Sounds clever, right? And it is, but it's not a free pass. The meter collar still has to follow the 120% rule because the energy it's feeding is still traveling through the main bus bar. And when your home's energy usage spikes, air conditioning, laundry, cooking, EV charging, the solar system can be throttled to prevent overloading the system. It's kind of like trying to pour water into a pipe that's already full. It just can't take more, so the system automatically slows down. That's where power control systems come into play, or PCS. Think of PCS like a smart traffic light for your power. It constantly monitors how much energy your home is pulling from the grid and how much your solar and batteries are producing. If things get crowded, PCS tells your solar to ease up for a second, keeping that total flow under the safe limit. When the grid load drops, it opens things up again, allowing your solar and batteries to push more energy into your home. So with PCS, you can install larger solar and battery systems on smaller panels without technically breaking code because the system is actively managing current flow in real time. But here's the catch. PCS is a safety feature, not a substitute for electrical capacity. A 100 amp panel with PCS might handle a power wall today, but what happens when you buy an electric vehicle next year or switch out your water heater to electric or upgrade to a heat pump, that 100 amp disappears fast. And that's exactly why I tell homeowners, 
PCS can help you comply, but it doesn't mean you're ready for the future. Now, let's talk about another piece of the puzzle, the MID, or Main Insulation Distribution Panel. This is often referred to as an automatic transfer switch, and it's designed for dual source connections, meaning it can safely handle power from both the grid and your solar or battery system. If your system connects through the MID, like a Franklin whole home A gate or a Tesla gateway, the 120% rule applies to that device, not your main service gear. In plain English, that means your main electrical panel isn't the one taking the back feed anymore. The MID is the new intersection where everything's managed and balanced. It's like adding an extra traffic roundabout between the utility and your house, one that's built to handle heavy two-way traffic safely. And that's how these hybrid systems avoid the same limitations that traditional solar-only connections faced in the past. Now you might be wondering, if these technologies exist, why do panel upgrades still matter? Here's the thing, while PCS and MID systems can help you stay within code and save money up front, they don't increase your electrical capacity. If you got a 100 amp service, you've got a small driveway. PCS can act like a valet, moving cars around so you don't block it, but it doesn't make the driveway bigger. That's why upgrading to a 200 amp service is such a big deal for future-proofing your home. With more EVs, induction cooking, and all electric appliances, your home's power needs are only going up. And once you've got solar and storage, it really makes sense to build the electrical foundation to support it in the future. Right now, through my partnership with Axia by QCells, we can offer main panel upgrades starting around $3,500 when combined with a solar or battery installation. Now, most electricians charge closer to $5,000, but if you're already investing in solar, this is the best time to do it. Not years down the road when you're, you've already outgrown your system. Because the truth is, PCS and MIDs are smart, but upgrading your panel is what makes your home ready. So if you're planning solar or energy storage, know your limits, understand the 120% rule, and make sure your system is built for where your home's going, not just what it needs today. If you found this helpful, like this video, subscribe to the channel for more educational content, and reach out to RE Innovations by using the link down in the description below so you can receive a personalized consultation for your needs and wants when it comes to clean renewable energy. I'm Dale with Renewable Innovations, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.